Hey everyone, it's River here uh, with a quick tutorial on Adobe Photoshop Express, the free version. Uh, we're just going to go over some of the key features that I like to use um, as well as some of the ones that I like to ignore. So I'm going to start with this photo that I took in Marshall, North Carolina. And right at the bottom toolbar, you can see uh, different ways to edit our photo. And it can be kind of overwhelming at first. Uh, the very, oh, all the way on the over left hand side where we have looks and overlays, we can probably, um, these are similar to filters, like on uh, a social media network. Instagram, things like that. I try to avoid these because they can come out across super cheesy. Next we have cropping. So this is where quite literally you can cut off, well digitally, crop, you cut off the edges of your photograph. And this is a good way to get rid of distracting elements in the background. Things that you may not find necessary in your photo. But this is also important for cropping if uh, you need certain dimensions for a specific project. You can also rotate in this cropping section if you want to create a slightly different angle. And you can flip horizontally or vertically so if you want to see what it looks like in a slightly different way and with transform you can skew your image to the right of crop is adjustments and this is where uh, you can adjust a lot of the lighting color effects and some of the uh, refined details so under light we have exposure which determines how much light is in the photo. All the way to the right, you have an overexposed photograph or an underexposed photograph all the way to the left where the photograph's all dark. We're gonna leave this in the middle. Contrast is when your lightest lights and darkest darks are uh, closer together or farther apart. Adjusting shadows and highlights and uh, the whites and blacks are just uh, a little bit more nuanced than uh, just adjusting the contrast if you want a wide range between the darks and the lights of your image that can bring a lot of pop. Now we're at color. Temperature, color temperature if you want the temperature to be a little cooler, a little warmer, and that gives us a bit of a different feel depending on what we're going for. Um, maybe a cooler tone makes it more magical, and a warmer tone makes it seem more summery uh, or early morning time, like the sun shining through. I'm gonna leave this one at a little bit warmer. Usually, usually a little bit goes a long way. And then we have saturation. So this is where if we bring it, our saturation down, this is where we can get to either totally black and white or uh, kind of like an aged photo look or just a little bit saturated. Or we could bring our saturation up a bit. Again, this can go, the saturation can go uh, be a bit too much we bring the slider all the way to the right it can be a little too powerful but that might be a look that works for your specific photograph and then we have other adjustments that we can play with with the grain how much texture do we want to show up or how much do we want to soften the photo because there's a lot of texture in this photo already and that's a major part of uh, taking this photo in the first place i really do want to highlight that texture if you're taking a photo of a person you probably want to do the opposite and soften a lot of those imperfections instead of highlighting uh, 
um, the textures that we see when we zoom in. So you can really play with different effects to see if it adds to your photograph or if it's too much, a little bit goes a long way. Um, playing around the slider bars too, just to see, hey, is this actually adding to my photos, is taking away from it? Sometimes uh, if, you, if you are going for a specific mood, let's say you want kind of like a mysterious or dreamy mood, maybe more of a faded, um, grainy look is what you can be going for. So that graininess can also be called noise. So these are the most of the free features. There's also a blur feature, which uh, the outer radius kind of determines where the blur ends, um, how wide it is, and the inner circle determines the uh, main focus of um, you know, what's going to stay in focus. So if the circles are closer together, then the gradation from blurry to not blurry is going to be more drastic rather than a subtle kind of effect. Vignette, this is uh, if you want kind of like a faded edging to your photo, it could be black or white. Sometimes a little bit of black can be good. Again, this isn't one of those things that can come across as cheesy if you're not careful. And now to save in the upper right hand corner, there is a button to save, to download. Usually there should be no watermark, even on the free version. And if you tap save, it'll just save to your photos. And that's some easy basic edits you can do with your photos.